Hi, my name is Consada, and today I'm going to be continuing the series on divorce. This is actually the sixth one, and I keep finding more and more stuff, so <laughs> there's a lot to teach on it. So, and I was going to put my disclaimer out there. I try to do it on every one of these videos, especially about divorce. Um, number one, I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Um, there's no condemnation in Christ. We all know that. I'm not judging because like I said, I'd be judging and condemning myself. The only reason I think I'm doing this is just to prevent another divorce. Even if you're happily married now, everybody's always happily married at some point. You know, and I'm not speaking negative. I'm just saying, let's just keep it that way. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Whether it's your first marriage or second, third, fourth, whatever. Hopefully, hopefully to just kind of break that, you know, from happening. Um, could possibly be a generational curse, something that needs to be broken. If you see it just over and over and over and over and over again in your life or in the lives of your family. Um, so, you know, you could break that or if you don't think it's that, then just maybe just knowing some of the scriptures I think would probably help. And the reason I think it's so important is because sometimes we make decisions in our life and we don't know what the scriptures say. And you could be a Christian for a really long time, I know I was, and either forget those scriptures or you don't study those scriptures or just not fresh in your mind. Because it's hard for me to believe that a, a born again Christian would go against the word of God. Uh, even if their situation was really bad, it's just hard for me to believe they would go against the Word of God. But we do, and we have. And I'm just thinking if we just put it out there a little bit more, then, you know, sometimes you, you may be in a really bad, difficult situation, but there's something about the Word of God and trusting in the Word of God and using your faith with the Word of God that can help change that situation around if you you know take the time to study it and meditate on it and stand on it and and pray you know and wait for that victory instead of just sometimes what seems to be uh, the easy way out I've talked about this before regarding other things that the easy way out is not always the best way and actually I'll be honest with you what I okay this is me what I have found out in my life that usually, not always, but usually God's way is the harder way, you know, and it takes a lot of crucifying of the flesh, which is something we don't like to do, you know, getting rid of pride and, you know, apologizing and you know, a lot of self-sacrifice, a lot of time in prayer and fasting and, you know, how important is it to you? So, uh, to save that marriage and to save, and it's not just the marriage, it's, it's the family. You know, we do not want to be told that anything we do is going to affect our kids in a bad way. That is a hard fact. And somehow in our mind, we justify or rationalize that this would be better for them. Could that just be maybe an excuse to make the decision to get out easier? Because in all reality, and this is really sad to say, it does affect them and usually not in a good way. And if you take a step back as the years have gone by, you can see it, you know. Kids are, you know, can be resilient, but it does affect them. So the only reason I'm saying it, I'm not trying to bash any of you because again, I know. I've cried the tears. I know the pain. So I don't want you to go through it. I don't want you to sit back and say, oh my gosh, what did I do to my family? And what did I do to my children? And that is only why I'm trying to save somebody that may be contemplating divorce or maybe you're in a marriage now 
and that maybe somewhere in the future things start going bad that maybe you could remember some of these things and say hmm maybe I better think twice or maybe a hundred times before I make that decision or just not make it so easily because I was writing this down the other day and I was just writing down different reasons why people you know get divorced and again people I know everybody has different situations and different scenarios and I'm not trying to make you feel better than you probably already do because divorce is very painful if you think it's not it, you know what I always say think again very painful for everyone involved um, and what I don't understand is why people don't come out and tell you this I think nobody really wants to dig that deep into your business because you're gonna probably bite their head off, you know, or they're not gonna to wanna to listen to you and you just don't wanna deal with it. Not everybody can confront people um, because there could be a backlash and they could get mad at you and not talk to you again, like you don't understand and that kind of a thing. And so we avoid it we don't say anything. We just let them go ahead and do it. And then they probably won't admit it and we won't admit that we should have Maybe try it a little harder to help them to not let that happen. But we just kind of try to take the easy way out ourselves. Even as friends and relatives, we just let them let, you know, it's their business. Let them deal with it. Let them take care of it, you know. Because um, we always think everybody knows what they're doing. When actually people, they don't. Or we don't. You know, sometimes you get so caught up in the strife of all of whatever's going on. Because a lot of times there's fighting and arguing and strife. And, you know, the Bible says where there's strife, there's every evil work. And you can't even, you think you're thinking rationally or whatever, but you're not. You know, you actually, deception sets in. And whether you want to believe that or not, that's part of that evil, every evil work. You start becoming deceived, actually thinking this would be better. To get out so you know it's kind of like every time something in your body hurts should we cut it out you know thinking well I'll get rid of the pain and you got you got to have them organs okay you need them there's a reason why they're there you can't cut everything out you know you can't you can't dismiss every person that does you wrong you won't have anybody in your life you know what i'm saying it's like you gotta start thinking rationally here you know and i've said this so many times before that you know daniel was thrown in the lion's den god did not spare him from that he didn't even do anything wrong you know but god saved him in the lion's den he didn't try to get out of it and he was innocent. Same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know I sound like a broken record, but God did not spare them from the fiery furnace. But where did God show up in the fiery furnace? God came in and they were willing to, to not only suffer, but die, you know, for their religion. Are we willing to die for our religion? We can't even handle stress in our marriages. And, and again, I'm not, everybody has a different situation. And I remember, you know, you think that what you're going through is so hard and so difficult. And all you think about is getting out. You know what I'm saying? And I've compiled so many stories from so many people, you know. And uh, the easy way is not usually God's way his way seems like it's the harder way but the one thing about God's way is it's it like crucifies our flesh because usually our flesh is at full flare okay with whatever's going on and it's not good and it's tough and it's difficult and it's hard and it's sad and which means your flesh is just way out there up there whatever you want to call it and um we don't like when our flesh doesn't feel good. Everybody does everything in the world. Take a pill, do this, do that, anything to not have to feel stress or pain or confrontation. We will do anything to get out of it, you know? But you know what? It's a part of life. You know, I've, I've, I've sat back so many times and I thought that, you know, we have this 
idea that life is always supposed to be okay and we can just pray everything away and I don't know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 18 says, you know, we're troubled on every side. We're, we're yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. So when we're cast down, we have to remember, but I'm not going to be destroyed. You know, we, we, we feel threatened. We feel persecuted we feel abandoned we feel betrayed we feel all these kind of things but god says we're always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in our body you know maybe the life of jesus needs to be manifest in our marriage people need to see yeah marriage is tough sometimes it is difficult yeah you probably will fight sometimes and butt heads you know I mean, hopefully you don't, but that's just a sign of immaturity. You need to grow up in that area. But it's better to fight it out than to break up. And I don't mean fist fight. I mean, you know, you're going to fuss and argue and complain and go back and forth like that. Um, again, and I've always said this, if somebody is like beating the snot out of you physically or somebody's getting sexually abused, then of course you need to... Um, separate I didn't say divorce you know who are we to say that in some time after much prayer and fasting that that person can't get better they could get delivered because a lot of times there's some things that surface in people's lives and they don't always surface right away it could be 10 20 30 years later something will come up and they just need delivered. I know things showed up in my life like 30, 40 years later, you know, that I didn't know was there. It's you. sometimes they show up when you're vulnerable, when you're uh, sad, when you're weak. If you've gone through tra trauma, crisis, then you'll see those things will pop up, you know. Um, but just because they don't happen for a while doesn't mean they're not there, but you shouldn't be afraid that they're going to pop up. You know, like, oh, should I get married to this person because I don't know what's going to show up. You know, what? <laughs> if the Lord said that's your person and you knew it, you know, you got to hang in there with that. You know, um, somebody said to me, they go, well, what if you find out you're married to a Satanist? I'm like, oh, that would be a tough one, boy. Whew. Um, you better get them delivered. <laughs> there are people that actually do deliverances and I'd make sure they found someone to get delivered you know so get those demons out um you always have to listen to the lord listen to his word be led by the holy spirit you know whatever you do okay um i'm just saying you know we shouldn't write people off so soon i'm not talking about the satanist stuff i'm talking about just our general everyday lives and marriages and problems that people have you know I have seen God, oh my gosh, even just recently, prayer after prayer after prayer, answers, answers, answers. Sometimes you don't get the answers right away or at the time you think you should have them. Oh my gosh, but he does answer prayer. If you haven't got your answer yet, hang in there. God is faithful. He will answer you, okay? Sometimes we just have to make sure we're spending time with him and that we're getting quiet before him so we can hear him because sometimes we have a tendency to busy our life so much you know we'll read that book before we'll read the bible we'll watch that movie before we'll have family devotions or pray with our mate and our kids you know where are we putting our time you know wherever you put your time is where you're going to get the benefits out whatever you sow into is going to grow you know and uh you know Whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of it. So sometimes we have to not be afraid to admit that, hey, I didn't do everything right. You know, this could have happened. I was a lukewarm Christian. I wasn't, I wasn't reading my Bible. I wasn't aware of these scriptures, and I feel bad now. So you just repent. Just repent. I shouldn't have done this and that and that and that. Trust me, I got, all, I got a whole list of mine. I feel like I'm always repenting for something. But, um... 
And if you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I married this person and that person and this person. I did this wrong and that wrong and this wrong. Um, you know, don't beat yourself up. You know, it's like anything else we do wrong. You know, just play the blood of Jesus over your situation. The blood of Jesus. God says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all all unrighteousness so there is forgiveness for everything all I'm trying to say is and I definitely don't want to bring more hurt because divorce brings enough hurt on itself it's like a death people have said that they said it's like a death it's almost like um, a living death where because the person's still alive you know but you're still somehow like mourning you know what you had or what you've lost or you know memories and all this stuff it's like you're mourning and you're alive and you're both still alive it's very painful and I believe it's painful for the children and I don't mean to keep putting that out there but if if, if you got to stay together for the kids do it do whatever you got to do because their futures it's so important um, you know can they still make it because a lot of people out there you know you, we have to think, well, are my kids going to make it because now I'm divorced and have been several times? Yeah. You pray for him. If you raise them up in the ways of the Lord, God says when they're older they won't depart. I mean, yes, they can heal, but they're going to have battle wounds. They're going to have to, they're going to struggle. They're going to have to believe God. They're going to have to have you know, some bumps in the road to try to get over a lot of the things. It's like the enemy comes and attacks them too. And they feel abandonment and shame. And, you know, did I do something wrong? And, and here I am by myself now. And one of them doesn't love me or, or something, you know, uh, or who do I choose? Who do I pick? And then you've got kids going to this one, then to that one, and one saying one thing, one saying another. Who do I listen to? Who's right? And it can be confusing, and it's like, why put them through that? We love our kids so much, you know. Try to bear it for, for their sakes, you know, if you, if you can. Like I said, if there's physical or uh, sexual abuse in there, then yeah, you're gonna have to separate until that person can get better, delivered. You know what I'm saying? People go through rough times and you know, you might wanna blame it on them and they'll blame it on you. And you know, it's something as the years go by, how you start beginning to think, huh, you know, maybe, I, maybe it wasn't all their fault, you know? I mean, trust me, you probably will, I'm sure. You know, and you go through all this, you're sad, you regret, you're like, why didn't I think about that? What was I thinking? And they may be th doing the same thing. And so be patient, take your time, and really seek the Lord in every situation, whether it's mar marriage, business, uh, kids, anything, we're going to say, Lord, what do you say about this? And that's why I'm bringing healing, uh, not healing, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, you need healed too, but um, scriptures, marriage scripture, scriptures, just so you can think about them and, and hide them in your heart, you know, like David said, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee, so hide God's word in your heart, and keep it before you, just because you have a really good marriage now, you want to keep that. So make sure you keep those scriptures where you can read them periodically as a husband and wife. You know, so you can remember them. Because, I mean, we even forget our wedding vows, you know. Um, you know, in sickness and health and good times and bad times. Yikes, it's easy in the good times, but what about the bad times? You know, it's like, what happened? Did we forget? Uh, even those, those are just, those are just wedding vows, you know, but how, how quickly we forget those when things go bad. So yeah, we have to remember our wedding vows and the scriptures. Okay. So I'm going to, I want to read today. What I wanted to read was, um, actually, 1 Corinthians 13. This is my <laughs> marriage scripture. I might have another one in here too, I want to say. 
I always like to put another one out there, but 1 Corinthians 13 really helps you to see if you're walking in love or not, because you gotta have this kind of love in marriage to make it work. And it just kind of is like a little checklist. Am I doing this? Am I doing that? You know, I could probably get better in this area. That's the only reason I'm putting it here, you know? Um, because many times I've, I've read that and I'm like, oh, yikes, I'm not walking in the kind of love that I should be. You know, our definition of love and God's definition of love is not always the same. Ours is conditional. If you meet all my needs, if you do everything right, if you, you know, people can get silly and say, you know, if you put the toothpaste lid back on or you, you know, what are some of the things? Pick up your clothes or whatever, you know, then I'll love you. But we can get very aggravated and agitated over little things you know that are not really that important you know what did somebody say one time pick your battles right now unless they're doing something against the word of god then i think it's really good for a husband and wife to sit down together and discuss you know this is i was just wondering kind of real nice and sweet with love you know this is something that i saw and i was just wondering um, if we could study that out in the word of god and see what God has to say and I'm not judging you I love you with all my heart but I was wondering you know and, and you, you you want to do that for each other you know what I mean um, to help each other you know um, so I want to um, let me read 1 Corinthians, oh, I wrote it, here it is, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm in the Amplified, I think I have it in here, where is it? 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. All right, it's going to start with um, where it says, If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, which uh, in parentheses it says, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love, for and in us. I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Now that's not saying tongues has been done away with. It just means, you know, that's a good thing, but you still got to have love, okay? And if I have prophetic powers, which is the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge. And if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, and that's God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned, or in order that I may glory but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. Now listen to this. This is just for us to have a little checkup on ourselves. I'm reading it to myself too. <laughs> Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, that's unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Yikes, that's an ouch. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Whoa. Yeah. This is the kind of love we're supposed to be walking in, but we don't sometimes, you know? So we take no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. 
It never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth, which I believe that's when we get to heaven. For our knowledge is fragmentary. It's incomplete and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching, is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. For now, we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality, as in a riddle or enigma. But then, when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face now. I know in part, imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. And so faith, hope, and love abide. Faith is a conviction and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things. Hope joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Wow, that's so beautiful. Oh, that's a scripture, it's a big one, but one we should probably keep before us. I've, I've measured my love or lack of love <laughs> by reading that, saying, yikes, oops, ow, I'm not doing that. I need to. That's the kind of love we need in marriage. Um, so, again, I'm not trying to really get down on anybody or anything. This is just, a, I'm reading to myself, too, you know. I want to walk in the love of God with everybody, you know. Yeah, definitely with the person you're married to, but everybody, right? Because love is so powerful. Love is always the higher ground. Because the Bible says in John that God is love. That is the highest power that there is. Whenever you're walking in love, you have the presence of God, the peace of God, the knowledge of God, the wisdom. You always have the higher ground over the enemy. So there's so many times people need prayers answered in their marriage or in other areas of their life. But they've got hatred and anger and bitterness toward people in their life. And it could be an ex-spouse, an ex-mate, or even for some people, a boyfriend or girlfriend. But if you have that bitterness or unforgiveness, and then you're going to wonder why your prayers aren't getting answered. You know what I'm saying? You have to love. If... You know, we all need forgiveness. And if you want God's forgiveness toward you, you know, for when we do something wrong, we have to forgive others. And in order to go on, you know, somebody said, you know, forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. You know, you're held captive by unforgiveness. And you're wondering, why is not my marriage changing? Or why isn't this person getting better? But, but you hate your you know, brother-in-law or you, you, you can't stand your cousin because of something they did or uncle or aunt or some, somebody, you know, it may have nothing to do with your marriage. This is just a little reminder. Um, you've got to walk in love with everyone. Yeah, definitely. It's your mate, of course, you know, and that'll help things. And people say, I can't, you don't understand. I can't forgive them. I can't. And <sighs> pray. That's what I'm going to pray for today. I'm going to pray because, especially in marriage, this is really important in every area of your life, but especially, you know, obviously to hold that marriage together, to get through the difficult times. If you walk in the love of God, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, the whole chapter, if you read it and over and over and over again and keep a checkup on yourself, am I walking in the love of God? You know, our love goes real quick 
You know, somebody does something wrong or they're mean or nasty or lie about you or cheat or anything, that love goes out the door, you know, and, and you're sad or upset or you're angry and you're bitter and unforgiveness can turn to bitterness and, you know, it, it's not going to help the situation because especially if you're struggling in your marriage, you've got to have the love of God to, to restore and be able to hang in there together through the difficult times, you know. And in the stories of Daniel and the stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was their love of God that sustained them. You know, they were willing to, to, to die if they had to. Daniel wasn't going to give up praying, you know, because he loved God. And, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they love God so much. They're like, we can't bow down to you. You, you. These are idols. You know, we serve only one God. Well, the same thing here in your marriage. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to be thrown in the fiery furnace? Are you willing to be thrown in the lion's den? You know, it feels like that sometimes. And instead of trying to get out of it, you know, just say, God, help me. I'm in the fiery furnace, but I need you to show up in here. <laughs> but you know what? I want to tell you something. You got to be walking in love. You got to be walking in love. And I'll tell you what, when you walk in love, which is God's agape love, which means that it's unconditional under any condition, you know, without reservation, God will show up. I promise you, he'll show up and you'll get your miracles. But again, everything happens according to God's word. What does God's word say about my marriage? Read those scriptures on marriage. You can look them up on your phone. What does God say about this situation? The 1 Corinthians 13 carries a lot of weight because it talks. You need love to carry you through the difficult times. And if you're so strong in love, you're going to make it. You know, you're going to recognize that, you know, this is not my husband. This is not my wife. You know, this is the enemy trying to break up our good marriage. And I'll tell you what, there's probably one thing at the top of Satan's list to break up would be good, godly, Christian marriages. Okay? The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. He wants to ruin your marriage so he can make the kids real vulnerable. And trust me, he goes after them. And you. But you know, it's it's that's exactly what he wants. Especially, too, if you have a major call on your life as individuals, as a family. Oh, he'll do anything he can to break up your marriage. But we think it's the mate. But that's not what the Bible says. You know, unless you pray and fast and everything and, and you need to hear from God. What does God say about your marriage? Okay, go to God fast and pray. How important is your marriage? How important is your children? I'm not trying to throw your children in your face, but if that keeps your marriage together, do it. The kids will love it. They'll get over the fighting. They'd rather you fight than break up. Trust me. You know, because that's all they know of then is brokenness. My parents are divorced. That's going to be their call for the rest of their life. My parents were divorced. And let me go one step further. This is a tough one. Okay. I believe if you haven't seen it in your family already, it's a generational curse passed down. A lot of us will see that. You don't want it to keep going down to your children. That could be a generational curse if you see it in your family members and, and relatives. You've got to break it. How are you going to break it? You've got to hang in there. You know, and say, you know what? That came down through the bloodline. But it stops with me, with my marriage. Don't let the enemy pass that down to the generations that come after you. You understand, this is a really important covenant that we make. And we don't want to have that open door for our children to be now susceptible to divorce as well. Break it. I remember that pastor said, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Let it stop with you and your marriage. So I want to pray. I want to pray for his salvation, if you can be born again, but I also want to pray for your marriage, um, that you could walk in the love of God and forgive, you know? We all have to. 
And uh, so there will be hopefully no more divorces. <laughs> Again, no condemnation from the past. Ask God to forgive you. If there's any way you can reconcile, always do that. If the person is already remarried or whatever, you know, you could always forgive in your heart and tell them, you know, hey, I'm sorry or I forgive you or and to God and, you know, make things right. Okay, don't hold bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, you got to walk in the love of God if you want your prayers answered, even for anything you're going through in your life now and, and going on in the future. Right? You have to walk in love and forgiveness. Read 1 Corinthians 13 over and over and over again. So, I'm going to pray for salvation. And then I'm going to pray for you, for your marriages, and for, you know, the love of God. To be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. God wouldn't tell you to do something unless he wouldn't help you to do it. You know? He's not going to tell you to do something impossible. You can do it. Just like he did on the cross, he said they were killing them. And usually your mate's not trying to kill you, uh, I don't think. Uh, you know, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And sometimes people are just going through a really, really bad time. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. You know, let's forgive like he forgives and love like he loves. That's what we pray for. Okay? So let's pray for salvation if you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I also want to remind you, God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So we can say we love him, but the Bible says if you love him, you'll obey him. So you got to obey him. Obey the word of God. You know? So there's another scripture that says, um, you know, people say, I love you. God says, you know, you say you love me, who you have not even seen. But you can't love your brother, who you see. So, you can't say you love me, who you haven't seen. So, we need to read our Bibles, people. Okay? Um, I think the, the most mistakes I made in my life is because I wasn't reading my Bible. I was a lukewarm Christian, and it's not good. The Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge. Read your Bible. So, okay. So, let's pray. Let's pray. This is for salvation. If you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord and Savior, you can repeat after me or even in your own words. Father, forgive me for all the mistakes that I've made in my life. I repent. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I give you my life. I want to live for you from now on. Help me to live for you. I know you died and rose again from the dead. You are the Son of God. Help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the next prayer is going to be just for your marriage. Or um, even if, let's say you're not married. And so you could not get divorced when you do get married. But let's just pray for God to help you to love with his love. Like 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 13. And forgive. Forgiveness is love, same thing. You can't say you love somebody, but you won't forgive them. Or some people say, oh, well, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. Well, that's not love, or that's not forgiveness, because forgiveness is actually treating the person as though they never did anything wrong. You treat them as though they're innocent. That's love, that's forgiveness. So, so just say, you can repeat after me or in your own words right now, and just say, Father, forgive me for all the mistakes I made in my previous marriage or marriages. Um, for anybody that's already been married, maybe more than once, forgive me, Lord, for what I did to myself, to my mate, to my children. Forgive me, Father God. I am so sorry. I repent. Forgive me. Help me, Father God, to love with your love, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Help me to forgive with your forgiveness, Father God. Help me. Show me the way. Show me how. Give me revelation of how to love from your word, your agape love, which is unconditional, which means under every and any condition, help me to love. Again, people, that's not condoning if there's, you know, bad behavior or something, but you still have to pray for that person and forgive them regardless. And ask God to heal your heart and heal your situation. <clears throat> and so, Father God, I just pray 
that marriages would stay together, Lord, that couples would walk in your agape love, your unconditional love, and forgive with your forgiveness, and love with your love, Lord God. As stated in 1 Corinthians 13, I ask you, help them, Father. Bind them together in your love. A three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Keep God the center of your marriage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I just pray that, you know, God helps you if you're in a difficult situation. He will. Just pray and fast and pray in the Spirit. I did a video on Christian tongues. <laughs> so it's worth it. It is. It's worth it. Remember, your mate is not your enemy. You only have one enemy. And that's the devil. So he wants to break up your marriage, but don't let him, okay? Because with God, all things are possible. You can do this. God will strengthen you and he will help you. So I think that's it for today. And I just want to say God bless you. Until next time.